mental health, physical conditions, and other personal struggles have caused some of our favorite Hollywood stars to leave the industry. It's always heartbreaking to see them go, but sometimes they're happier for it. Keep watching to find out why these actors quit Hollywood. Many 90s kids will remember Amanda Bynes' turn in Nickelodeon's All That. Her zany, attention-stealing energy was watchable enough to land her a sketch show of her own, fittingly called The Amanda Show, and a lead role on What I Like About You. From there, she transitioned to film, picking up lead roles in What a Girl Wants in 2003, and the teen Shakespeare flick She's the Man in 2006. She also appeared as part of the ensemble cast of Hairspray in 2007, which made a tidy profit at the box office. In 2010, she played the gossipy, moralizing mean girl in Easy A, opposite Emma Stone, another well-received teen literary adaptation. Despite these apparent successes, Vines tweeted in 2010, if I don't love something anymore, I stop doing it. I don't love acting anymore, so I've stopped doing it. Just a month later, Vines tweeted that she had, quote, unretired, she then deleted her Twitter account altogether, only to get a new one. These were the early signs of what became a long and highly publicized series of mental health episodes, including a string of DUIs, hit and runs, and an arrest. She also accused her father of abuse, only to recant this claim in a bizarre tweet. She wrote, My dad never did any of those things. The microchip in my brain made me say those things, but he's the one that ordered them to microchip me. She threatened a lot of people with a lot of lawsuits, reserving particular fire for any tabloid that claimed she was misusing drugs. Finally, in 2013, Vines entered rehab. In 2014, she tweeted that she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and manic depression, and that she was in treatment. These days, she seems to be on the mend. Although Easy A remains her last role, she revealed in a 2017 interview that she was three years sober and wanted to act again. A hot commodity in the 1990s and 2000s, Cameron Diaz had a very successful career, earning enough money to lead several lifetimes of luxury. From her first acting experience in 1994's The Mask, to her starring turn in There's Something About Mary, and from Spike Jonze's Being John Malkovich, to Martin Scorsese's Gangs of New York, her filmography shows considerable range. Yet creative block happens to the best of us. This is why Diaz hasn't appeared in a film since the 2014 musical comedy remake of Annie. Speaking at a summit hosted by Gwyneth Paltrow, Diaz said, I just went, I can't really say who I am to myself, which is a hard thing to face up to. I felt the need to make myself whole. She has few regrets about retiring and has kept busy over the last seven years. In 2015, Diaz married good Charlotte lead guitarist, Benji Madden, and four years later, their daughter Radix was born. I love him so much it hurts. Before that, in 2016, Diaz published her book, The Longevity Book, The Science of Aging, The Biology of Strength, and The Privilege of Time. It was followed by 2013's The Body Book, Feed, Move, Understand, and Love Your Amazing Body. Christopher Reeve had a thriving career. A graduate of Juilliard, he had his breakout role in the original Superman movie from 1978 and continued to work on several other projects including The Remains of the Day in 1993 and many plays. In 1995, Reeve attended a dressage and show jumping event in Culpeper, Virginia. He learned to ride in 1985 for his performance as Count Vronsky in Anna Karenina and fell in love with the sport, developing a close bond with Eastern Express, his American thoroughbred. Tragically, Eastern Express suddenly balked on the third jump in the final competition, sending Reeve over the saddle and onto his head crushing his first and second vertebrae. This devastating injury paralyzed the actor from the neck down, causing him to use a wheelchair and ventilator for the rest of his life. According to one of Reeves' physicians, the actor would have died instantly had he fallen one centimeter to the left and experienced only a concussion had he fallen one centimeter to the right. Reeve was not a quitter though. He pulled through intense grief and suicidal thoughts to lead a busy life. Reeve campaigned for research into spinal injuries and stem cell therapy, raising some $138 million for researchers around the world. He forayed into directing and had a few appearances in shows like the TV remake of Rear Window and the CW Smallville, but his acting experience largely ended with the accident. After a period of ill health, he died of heart failure in 2004 at age 52. In 1985, Michael J. Fox became one of Hollywood's hottest young actors with the role of Marty McFly in Back to the Future. 
a rip-roaring sci-fi comedy that topped the box office and became a classic of American cinema. Fox reprised McFly in two sequels while continuing his run on the hit NBC sitcom Family Ties. He also starred in Teen Wolf, Bright Lights Big City, and Casualties of War. It was during the production of Doc Hollywood in 1991 that Fox noticed his finger was twitching and that he had a creeping pain in his shoulder. These were symptoms of early-onset Parkinson's disease, a shocking revelation since most people who get the condition are over 60. Doctors told the 29-year-old star that he would have to quit acting in just a few years, but he proved them wrong with a busy career that included roles in Mars Attacks and Stuart Little. His biggest success was the Emmy-winning sitcom Spin City, which saw him play deputy mayor of New York City, Mike Flattery, for 103 episodes. I, I, I completely forgot, we'll, we'll just wing it. <laughs> Fox retired from the show in 2000 because of his worsening condition. Regular TV work followed in the 2000s and 2010s, including turns in Curb Your Enthusiasm, The Good Wife, and The Michael J. Fox Show, a sitcom inspired by the actor's life. Sadly, he wrote in his 2020 memoir that he was entering a second retirement because of new symptoms, including delusions, memory loss, and dementia. Shelley Duvall was once one of Hollywood's most recognizable faces. She rose to fame in the 1970s for her collaborations with celebrated director Robert Altman, including Brewster McCloud, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Nashville, and Three Women. Nearly all of these are now considered must-watch classics. Her success continued into the 80s with such films as Stanley Kubrick's The Shining in 1980, Robert Altman's Popeye from the same year, and Roxanne in 1987. After TV appearances and supporting roles in the 1990s, Duvall quit Hollywood in 2002, leading a reclusive life with her husband in her home state of Texas. In 2016, she gave an interview on Dr. Phil that raised serious questions about her mental health. Disheveled and barely recognizable, Duvall made a series of bizarre claims, like insisting Robin Williams was still alive and that he'd become a shapeshifter, saying, he looks real good in some forms, in other forms, he doesn't. Do you see him? Yes, yes. Many commentators derided the interview calling it, quote, craven and sensational. In January, 2021, Seth Abramovich of The Hollywood Reporter managed to locate Duvall in Texas Hill Country and interview her. Happily, Abramovich found that Duvall possessed a sharp memory full of engrossing stories. In the nuanced, reflective piece, he noted, while she can be gripped by anxiety attacks or meander into unsettling descriptions of alien surveillance programs, she can also converse for long, coherent stretches and conjure up the slightest details about her life. Abramovich speculated that Duvall fled to Texas for both mental health and financial reasons. Although it's sad that we won't see her considerable talents on screen, it is reassuring to know that the Dr. Phil interview was a tabloid misrepresentation of her mental health. Mara Wilson became one of the biggest child stars in Hollywood after her performances in Mrs. Doubtfire and Matilda. However, when Wilson reached puberty in the early 2000s, the role suddenly dried up. When she did get auditions, she realized she was getting typecast as a, quote, fat girl stock character. Speaking with People magazine, Wilson said, I realized I don't fit their idea of what a Hollywood actress looks like, so there's no room for me here. She also said, sometimes I wished to be in an accident where I'd injure my nose and jaw so I could get reconstruction guilt-free. Wilson decided to focus on schooling rather than her acting career, eventually attending New York University. Sadly, the pressures of Hollywood stayed with her, especially when she saw actresses her age, like Scarlett Johansson and Kristen Stewart on magazine covers. Fortunately, Wilson was able to manage these anxieties through writing. These days, she lives in New York as a comedy writer, voice actress, and a notable Twitter persona. Tim Curry has had a long and busy career, logging some 236 credits on IMDb. This eclectic body of work includes the Rocky Horror Picture Show, It, The Hunt for Red October, Clue, and Congo, as well as dozens of TV appearances in Broadway shows. The British actor was working on around six projects a year when he suffered a debilitating stroke in 2012, which affected his speech and caused him to use a wheelchair. Since then, Curry has only done voice acting. He has credited his sense of humor as being, quote, absolutely vital to his recovery. He also said, it's not tough to maintain. It is just part of my DNA. Ah, oh, you're just in time for your party. He made one of his first public appearances since his stroke to accept a Lifetime Achievement Award at the 19th Actors Fund Tony Awards viewing party in 2015. 
He was very grateful for the award, explaining, It solidifies the kind of work the American acting community has given me for years now. I was thrilled when they told me, and I am thrilled now. Sometimes, the critics really do hurt. This was the case for Greta Garbo, whose 1941 film, Two-Faced Woman, was so maligned that the iconic actress left Tinseltown. She was 36 years old and had made 31 movies in just 20 years, which reflected not just her work ethic, but also her enormous popularity in both the US and her native Europe. She had even made the transition from silent films to talkies, a rare feat among her contemporaries. Yet Garbo found little satisfaction in her career, preferring the solitude she pursued from 1941 until her death in 1990 at the age of 85. She was almost persuaded to return on two occasions. First, an offer to play French novelist George Sand, and then a lead role in Alfred Hitchcock's The Paradigm Case. Ultimately, she decided to stick to her private drifting lifestyle. She wrote in a letter to her friend, Martha Wattmeister, I am almost always alone and talk to myself. I drive to the beach and take walks, and that's always marvelous. But that's it. I want to be alone. Frances Farmer had dreams of a theater career when she signed a seven-year contract with Paramount in the mid-1930s. Under this contract, she performed with Bing Crosby in Rhythm on the Range, Cary Grant in The Toast of New York, and Walter Brennan in Come and Get It. Still craving success on the stage, Farmer joined big Broadway productions. She was splitting her time between New York and Los Angeles when her mental health collapsed in 1942, a year that brought her divorce, drunken traffic violations, and the cancellation of her contract. Farmer spent the rest of the 1940s in and out of hospitals and sanitariums. She claimed she was abused at these institutions in her posthumous autobiography, though there's some speculation that the book may have been embellished. After a comeback appearance on This Is Your Life in 1958, Farmer had several television parts and a role in one film, The Party Crashers. This would be one of her last on-screen performances. Farmer died of esophageal cancer in 1970 at age 56. Partly because of her radical-leaning politics in her youth, and partly because of her tragic life, Farmer became something of a cult figure. Even Kurt Cobain was a fan. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, please contact the Crisis Text Line by texting HOME to 741-741. Call the National Alliance on Mental Illness Helpline at 1-800-950-NAMI-6264 or visit the National Institute of Mental Health website.